In this video, we discuss the need for operating systems and their function and purpose. We know that all computer systems input data. They process that data and they output a result. And quite often this process is going to involve a user that's going to provide that data. And the output is going to be produced by some hardware, whether that's a display or a printer of some form. So the user needs a way of interacting with that hardware, and that's the purpose of an operating system. It provides the interface between the user and the hardware. Now, the user doesn't tend to interact directly with the hardware, but instead they use application software, such as word processors, spreadsheets, or graphics programs, in order to accomplish a given task. And it's the role of the operating system to provide a platform on which that application software can run. Application software today usually involves a common user interface, so the user is interacting with the application software in a familiar and friendly way. The application software will have a user and the operating system is providing a platform for those applications to run and it's also providing its own user interface experience in addition to the application software. There are also a number of utility programs, some of which are built into the operating system that help to maintain the computer. Some typical examples might be encryption software, compression software and defragmentation software. Loading the various programs into memory so they can be executed and managing the data that those programs acquire is not a trivial task. So a very important part of your operating system is memory management. The user will also want to save what's in the memory from time to time so they don't lose their work when the power switched off. So the operating system also has to manage the file store. It has to make decisions about where files are going to be stored and where they're going to be loaded from again. The large array of additional peripheral hardware connected to computers are also going to operate in a very specific way, and therefore they need some device drivers in order to translate operating system instructions into something that the hardware is actually going to understand. The operating system is also responsible for handling and dealing with what are known as interrupts. This is when any device requires the attention of the processor. This could be quite dramatic, as in a power failure, or something that seems quite trivial, like a user pressing a key on a keyboard. We look at interrupts in more detail in a later video. One of the features of modern operating systems is something called multitasking. This is where you have more than one program open and running at the same time. Now, they're not really technically running at exactly the same time. The processor is allocating a small amount of time to each process, but it happens so quickly, it feels like they're actually executing simultaneously. So let's look at a typical example. Here, we have a word processor and it's had a document open, but that's not the only program that our computer has open. Perhaps you're also doing some research on the web using your web browser. Perhaps as you're working, you're also listening to some music that's being played by a media player in the background. You might well also have antivirus software that's preventing viruses from coming down from the internet and infecting your computer. The clock is also updating in the corner of your screen and the operating system itself is engaging in a number of maintenance tasks in the background as you're using the computer. So it appears that all these applications are running at the same time, but they're not. The word processor has a small time slice and then it's passed the web browser that has a small time slice. That's passed the music player that has a small time slice, then to the antivirus, then to the clock, and then back to the word processor again. But your computer executes these instructions so quickly that as a user, you don't really notice that it's actually switching tasks. This is what we call multitasking. 
Data for computer systems are stored in files, and every file may have an extension, depending on the type of operating system and how it supports files. An extension, in this case .pptx, tells the operating system which application to load the file into, so here it would choose PowerPoint as the target program. Over time, the hard disk becomes fragmented with files in the same way that we saw with memory. The operating system may present a logical structure of files into folders and allow the user to rename, delete, copy and move files. Now this presentation as shown here of files and folders is really for the user's benefit. It doesn't really exist like this on the actual secondary storage medium. So modern operating systems allow for more than one user to log in to a single computer. And when they do, they have their own preferences and settings. So here in the illustration, we see the settings for one user. They've got a blue theme. And when another user logs on, you can see they've got a purple theme. Each user may also have different access rights to files and programs. And if you're in a client server situation, such as a school on a network, the network may impose a fixed or roaming profile for users and manage login requests. A fixed profile will ensure that every user has the same desktop and settings. And roaming profiles allow users to customise their settings. And when they log into different computers, those settings follow them. The user interface which is a catch-all umbrella term for the way in which you interact with a computer as a human being. There are a number of ways of providing that interaction by an operating system, and one of the most common and familiar to you is what's known as the graphical user interface, or GUI. So here we've got windows, we've got icons, we've got menus, and we've got the pointer. And this is often known as a WIMP interface, windows, icons, menus, and pointers. It's a very visual interface and it's very interactive. It's quite intuitive to use, so it's ideal for beginners. And it's optimized for the mouse and touch gesture input. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. Why do computers need an operating system, such as Windows, Linux, or Mac OS? Thank you.